seeing that other people are moving too. I hope that catches on. That's pretty cool. All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest and it's quest time. Now, before we get going, I'm going to ask if everybody can stay off of the stage area here. This way nobody blocks the display and it gives me a little bit of room to move around here and do this whole presentation type deal. Um, I'm going to direct your attention now to your menu wheel. If you notice in your menu wheel in your lower left, you notice at the very top of it is a microphone icon. When that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hire everything that's happening in your environment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it to red. Uh, I see that's already been done. Thank you for that. And uh, now that it's red, you're going to see that uh, that means you're muted. And that means we're not going to hear what's happening in your environment. So if somebody comes in your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear that. Or if maybe you have like a barking dog or something like that, you won't face social ruin back at the campfire by becoming known as the avatar that started barking during its quest time. Now, just because you're muted does not mean you can't express yourself. You're going to notice that you have this emoji symbol in your menu wheel, this pink cheek smiley face. And when you click on it, your emoji panel opens up in the air in front of you, and it'll offer you a wide variety of options with which to express yourself. So if I say something deep and meaningful and it goes, you know, builds up inside, you can just let it out, let it flow, right? Maybe, this may be some backup dancers come out behind me, right? We get ready to it's quest time, the musical. You can throw up the applause that I live for and, you know, because they're all impressed, and I can take a moment to drink that in. Uh, if I ask you a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like this. You can say no by frowning like that. Or maybe I say something funny. If you like laughing, you can throw up one of these silly emojis to indicate that you're laughing. Um, you know, now, if you see one of these go up, now, don't confuse this with asking a question. They'll be taking questions and comments at the end. This is a way to get my attention. So if like, I see one of these go up, I'm going to keep on going. But if I see five go up, I know there's a problem. Like maybe you guys can't hear me, or maybe the screen behind me is bursting in the flames. That actually happened one time because our moderators tend to have a sense of humor, you know, and we uh, had given one of them Terraformer and, you know, they set the screen on fire and they, well, they thought it was funny. And I'm up here presenting and I saw the audience, they, they the lights were flickering, but I'm like, something's wrong. So I turn around to see what's wrong and, well, this display was on fire. And uh, yeah, it was a memorable time. It's good, good stuff, but it serves ever since then as an example of when that's a, a good thing to do. You know, all right, so uh, now uh, Questline is an event for Oculus Quest users, but all are welcome. So if you're on another device, feel free to hang around. You may pick up some useful information that's going to help our growing Quest community because there's new users, uh, new Quest users in all space all the time. Now, while we got those emoji panels up, let me ask you all some quick questions so I know how to proceed. Um, how many of you are actually on a Quest right now? Show me some emojis, raise your hand up, give me some you know, signs of life to indicate that you are on a Quest. Let me say. All right, that, that's a lot of people. All right, cool. Um, how many of you are upgrading from an Oculus Go? Like you're thinking about getting a Quest or you just had a Go and now you're getting a Quest or you or you just got your Quest? How many of you are new Quest users? Let's put it that way. Hands up if you're new to the Quest. All right, emojis, you know, hand up. You know, now that you got your two hands, you should use them. I can see you when you do this. All right, cool. Well, that's a lot of people, so you're all new. All right, cool. All right, it could be a lot to take in. Don't worry about it. We're going to go over all this stuff. All right. Uh, I guess it's just thank you for that. Gives me a good idea how to go. All right. Now, when I first got my Quest, I was coming from an Oculus Go, and I did an all space for a while. I did it for like about you know nine, ten months, something like that. And um, I was used to having the one hand. And when I talked, I, people only saw this one hand move. Now I grew up in Brooklyn, so when I talk, my hands move around a lot. I talk with my hands all the time. So when I got my Quest, I was very excited about getting this left hand. But it turns out that these hands, right, they're so much more than your hands. They're also your feet. They're how you move around. You know, they, they're how you interact with your environment. So in that way, they're a lot more than hands. And when you first look at the controls, especially with how they, you know, regard to all space, because we're mainly going to be talking about how these devices perform in all space today. So if you're wondering whether or not Vader is immortal, you know, you know or, or maybe your rhythm's off of Beat Saber, we can talk about that kind of stuff, but we're mainly going to focus on how these devices perform in all space. And listen, when you first get your device, these buttons are a lot to take in. They really are. Now, if you're here today, I know you know the basics. I know you know the left thumbstick's going to move you around like this. Your right thumbstick's going to turn you in circles. But if you combine them, you're going to go in these big, elaborate circles and make my presentation so much more dramatic, right? Everybody, if I can see you do these big circles right here, it looks like ballroom dancing when I move on out there. And I'm like, oh, that looks so, so cool. And I always say at this point, like, I wish you guys could see what I see. Everybody moving in a circles like that. But I tell you what, uh, you actually now can because we got a YouTube channel. So if you do a search for Raven Hall events on YouTube, you'll uh, take a look at some of the videos and maybe look to see if you can see yourself. And, you know, for a moment, you can feel 
all space famous. All right, now, uh, you can stop moving in circles. I don't want anyone getting dizzy yet. We're gonna do some more stuff. And again, if you are comfortable moving around on the quest, don't worry, some of these moving exercises, they can be a lot of fun for us to do together and it'll help everybody, you know, uh, you know, skill up real fast. And if you're new to the quest, you know, it'll, it'll help get you used to things in a hurry. All right, now some of the stuff we gotta, uh, you know, pay attention to here is on these controllers. You have on the right controller, you have a grip button. And on the left controller, you have a grip button. This is your third figure down. And this is how you're going to interact with objects in the environment, right? So let's say that, you know, like I, you can move it from one hand to the other like that. And if you twist your hand around like this, you can make it spin in the air or you can just kind of make it go back and forth. This is a cool way to fidget when you're talking with your friends. You're like, you know, yeah, you're going on about that thing again. And I'm just listening to you. All right. But what you can do here, right, is uh, when you are interacting with the world editor and you grab an object, the world editor, it's going to change the way you know, the, the, some of these buttons behave, right? So for instance, when you interact with the world editor and you're holding a world object, um, this right thumbstick is no longer gonna turn you anymore. What's gonna happen is if you move the, this thumbstick from, uh, from left to right, it's gonna change the scale or the size of the object, right? If you move your thumbstick you know, up or down or you know, back and forth, like going in a forward or reverse motion, you're gonna move the object further away or pull it closer to you. All right, now, now this isn't that overwhelming in that some of these buttons do the same thing. You're gonna notice that the select button right here, this right trigger button here, and if you have your left pointer enabled through your main menu, this uh, select button on your left uh, uh, controller there, this is uh, going to show everybody's name tag. So if you hold down one of these buttons now and move your hand to the crowd, you can see this is Aiden, say hi. You know, this is uh, this is Alaric, this is uh, Susan TC, we've got uh, Duder Jr. over here popping the hand up. If you have a question, we'll be taking it at the end, all right? If something's wrong, we'll uh, try to address it. No, something wrong, you're popping that hand up. All right, no? All right, cool, good to know. Uh, have fun with that. We got Tony over here, you know, and you can see everybody's name tag just by doing that. Also, you're gonna notice that you have on your on your left control, you have this left trigger. And when you squeeze that, what's gonna happen is you could be moving around, right? You're, you're walking along there and you press down and hold this, this, re, this left trigger button and you're gonna go faster, you're gonna accelerate, right? Do a quick lap around the room. Everybody give me some whirlpool action here. Let's see if we can get going in a circle here and give me a bit of a whirlpool thing going on. Let me see what this looks like. Everybody keep going in that whirlpool. Just don't get dizzy. If you feel dizzy, just stop. I just ran through a bunch of people. That was rude. Sorry for that. Let's see. It's not really like, I mean, all right. That's a very disorganized whirlpool. I gotta say, all right, you're starting to get more circular. It's starting to form. All right. So we'll look at it a little bit like crashing waves. All right. All right, slow down. I don't want anyone getting dizzy. Just, you know, slow down with that. All right. But uh, let's see what I do with that pointer. Oh, there it is over here. All right, now, uh, another button you need to be concerned with, listen, if you're having a room scale experience and you like step out past your main menu, this can happen a lot. And every time you stand, uh, step out past that main menu, somebody in all space is gonna say, well, you open your main menu and you're gonna be like, ah, again, where is this thing? And it's like always behind you, right? So what you wanna remember is on a quest, the main menu is always in your hand. All right, what I mean by this is if you press this flat button on your left controller on the bottom there, this button right here, when you press on that button, uh, your main menu is going to open up in front of you. If you press it again, your main menu is going to close. So if you lose your menu, you know, don't worry. That's probably the easiest way and the fastest way to get to it. And I, I, you know, I've gotten to a point now where I don't even press that big blue button in the menu wheel anymore. I just uh, press that flat button on my left controller to open up the menu, main menu in all space anytime I want. Um, now, on, in the in all space, you're going to you know, actually on the quest in general, you now have to worry about your vertical height. Like uh, moving up and down is going to take registers. Like we see somebody here, we got uh, Pete Lemon doing this here. If you want to change your height, show everybody what happens. Now, go, you know, change your height and stay there. Stay right there. But no, no, you keep moving back up. We got to show everybody. Oh, we got a few people here. All right. Uh, the press trash. You know, the green, uh, the person in green here. Now, if you show everybody what happens when you press your left thumbstick down, let's see what happens when you press it. Press the left thumbstick down. Press the left thumbstick. You got to press it. Boom. Just like that. He recenters. So somebody else got a little bit quicker. Aiden, say hi. Press that left thumbstick. Show me what happens. Show me. Boom. Just like that. Right, so that's what's going to happen when uh, if you find your vertical height changes, like if you feel like you're too tall or you're too short, and you notice a change in height compared to the charts around you, all you have to do is press down that left thumbstick, and like uh, Pete Lemon just did right here, and you'll recenter, and it'll bring you, it'll uh, adjust your height that way. Right, that's a uh, yeah, it's good to know. All right, now another button that you need to be concerned about here is uh, let's see, oh yeah, and you know with the uh, let's see, oh yeah, there's this teleport button on the right controller. And you also have one on your left controller. And I'm hoping you're in a line dash transition and teleport transition. Because when you are, you know, you can really feel the movement. It's a lot of fun. Well, if anybody can line up along this wall here, we can give that a try, all right? Because if you hold down your teleport button, you aim it at the floor, you're going to see a circle appear. You're going to see the target. And if you aim it across the room, right, we're doing it with the right controller now, and we let go of that button, boom, you're going to get thrown right across the room. Boom, just like that. I know they're a little, a little too early there. But uh, now with your left controller, 
right? If you hold down your left controller, you can hold that out and point it across the room. And as soon as you let go with the button, boom, you can take it right across the room. Just like that. And if you can hold down both teleport buttons at once and X on the floor and go at the same time, you go boom, boom, you have a zigzag teleport. First time I got used to this was like, I was out to the universe and back then it was held in the big world, right? So I walk up to the edge of the world when the event was over, you know, I'm exploring and I'm looking down off the edge. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I fell off the edge of the world and I start falling, right? And as I'm falling, I look over and I see this cliff off to the side and I aim my teleporter onto the cliff and I let go and boom, I was thrown to safety before I could respawn, right? And it was at that point, I knew I was getting used to the controls and you will too. If you're new to the quest and all this is a lot to take in, you're gonna get used to it in a few days to a week, right? And after a while, this stuff is gonna become like reflex. You won't even think about it. Like when I go to point my hand toward that window like that, say everybody, look at that window. I don't think about how to point. And the way I'm doing this is I'm holding down my third finger on the grip button, right? And that's gonna cause me to point. Now these are called gestures. You can make these with your hands. Right. Uh, if you hold down the grip button on both your hands, you're going to get like, you know, two points. You can give me a Brooklyn hello. Everybody go like this. Give me a Brooklyn hello. Everybody got that? Let me say, all right, cool. That's good to see. All right. A lot of people got it. All right. Now, if you hold down your trigger button on both hands, you can give me two thumbs up in addition to that. So I'm holding down my third finger and my index finger. And I got the two thumbs up. I give you two thumbs down. Maybe some of you not picking up and see one guy out here in the back. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I have a little bit of both. Right. A couple of weeks ago, we saw one guy do this. I like that. Now, when you see somebody do a gesture that you like, right, you copy it, you mirror it. That's how you make it your own. So somebody else is like going, hey, this is the Altspace logo, and you hold it up high. You do that too. It's somebody going over here doing like a field goal. Show me that again. And when you did just before that, look at that. Look at that. That looks cool, right? Every time I try to do a field goal, I'm going like this. Like somebody's face bubble is knocking me up here. There we go. I go like this, but this, that looks more real, right? I kind of, yeah, that, that's really good. And this is an example of what I'm talking about. One of the first quest times I had somebody, um, you know, focusing on the fact that my, my username is Raven Hole Laugh, right? And they kept coming up to me going like this, right? And I thought it was the coolest thing because it looks like a bird, right? The way it's moving around, all right? If you see something like this, you can mirror it. And if you see something that you like, you can copy it, do it, you can do it right back. And that's how you, you know, make it your own, right? Uh, you know, so uh, you have those gestures, you know, to get you started with. Oh, yeah. Also, if you're holding down your index finger and your third finger like that, Right? If you touch the controllers, if you touch the thumbsticks with your thumb, don't push down on them. Just touch the buttons or the thumbsticks. Your thumbs will go down just like that, just by touching them without even pushing down. So you can even combine this into like a dance move like that. You know, I kind of go like that. I'm told this doesn't look as cool as it feels, but I like to actually, it does look as cool as it feels. Oh, but you're doing it different. You're going like, oh, you got some strong body language going on there. That's cool. All right. I got it. I got it. This is a new one. I haven't seen this one before. Uh, this is cool. Good stuff. Excellent. Very cool. I like that a lot. All right. So now uh, what else do we have here? We have, uh, oh yeah, now there's another bo uh, button you need to know. And uh, this is pretty important. Don't press it now because if you all disappear, I'm going to feel it, right? But there's this button here and that's your fastest way out of all space. It says Oculus Home, but I like to think of this as an eject button. Because when you push it, right, you get taken out of all space and you're going to be given a choice to quit or resume. So if you're dancing at UG Verse and you press it on accident, you press resume, you can take it right back into all space again. But it's also good to know uh, for when things go wrong. Because sometimes they do. Sometimes when you're in all space, you know, you turn your head and the world keeps moving with you and you start to feel really sick when that happens because that can make you feel kind of dizzy, right? Uh, so you're going to need a quick way out. Or maybe somebody comes into your space and says, hey, dinner's ready. There's nothing more urgent than that. Right. So you press on that flat button on your right controller and you can take it out. And then when it says, you know, quit or resume, you say quit. The app closes. You go have your dinner. You can come back later, you know, and do it that way. Right. Um, but there are going to be times when you go to press this and nothing happens because your device is frozen. Right. Like so maybe your screen is frozen and you look up and there's this black void up there. You look down left and right. You're surrounded by a black void. All your friends on the screen are frozen like this. You know something's wrong. But what can happen is you press on that flat button and you're like, wait, I'm not ejecting. Michael Forrest was wrong. Right. But no, you're frozen. All right. And what you need to do at this point is restart your device. Now, a lot of people restart, restart the device while it's off their head. And, you know, what can happen is if uh, it takes a while for your, your device to restart, actually, it takes about 20 something seconds. And if your device isn't in a charge cycle, what can occur is the light won't go on. Right. And when you plug it in and you think your device is broken, that's what happened to me. And ever since then, every time I need to restart my headset, like before when I came in to prevent, uh, when I came in to start this event today, uh, I was, you know, a few minutes late because when I walked in, I heard there was a sound warble in my speaker, which could sometimes happen on a Quest. They're going to be fixing that in one of the next updates. But what I did to fix it was uh, I restart the device while it's still on my head. And it's a good skill to have, right? Every time I have to restart my device, I do it while it's on my head. 
And the way I do this is I take my index finger, right? And I, and I rub it up and down on the side of my headset until I feel that bump where the power button is. And then I counterbalance it with my other finger on the other side. And I squeeze those fingers together to push down without it shifting the weight on my face. And I shift it down like that. And I squeeze that. And I hold it down for about four seconds. And after about four seconds, the device shuts off. But I don't let go of that button. I just keep holding on. After about, you know, 10 seconds, I kind of wonder why I'm doing this. And I wonder, why does Oculus make it take so long? After about 15 seconds, I start thinking about old friends I haven't seen in a while. I wonder how they're doing. After about 20 seconds, I start thinking about, you know, this is dog I had when I was a little kid and wonder, you know, it's a good dog. Man. And then, you know, I start thinking about life, you know, all the big questions. After about 23 questions or so, uh, questions, after about 23 seconds or so, I'll hear a beep. And when I hear that beep, all right, I'll see the Oculus logo and I'll take my fingers away from the sides of the headset, just like that. And when I do that, um, the device will start normally. I'll be able to come back into all space. And this is going to solve the majority of the problems that you're going to have in all space, right? So either you restart all space or you restart your head. It's going to fix like everything in here. However, there are going to be times when something more serious goes on. Like one time I came out of all space and I saw this alert that said Oculus Home is closing. And, uh, and there was a blue, bo a blue button that said OK. So, you know, that being my only option, I pressed OK. And then all of a sudden the screen said, you know, loading. And it, st it said that for like five minutes. I said, something's definitely wrong here. So I restart my device, you know, it looks like I'm concentrating when I do it, right? I restart my device. I went through that whole routine, you know, thinking about that puppy again. And then I lift the hands up, right? And what happened, right? Well, my device restarted and it still said loading. So something was seriously wrong. So I asked my good friend Google about it. And Google said a lot of people were having this problem. And the very best thing I could do was a factory reset. So uh, I did a factory reset and that cleared it up. So it's good to know that the factory reset basically put your device back the way it was when you got it. But it's important to note that if you have any pictures on your device, or you're gonna lose that. Uh, you're gonna have to reinstall all your apps, any of the settings that you had in those apps, you're gonna have to redo, like if you're in all space and you've got your blinders turned off, right? Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to redo those settings all over again. So what can you know, happen there is if you are, you know, uh, restart, you know, basically doing a factory reset, you're gonna lose everything and go back to the day you've got Quest. You won't have to pay for the app again, so that's something. Uh, but it's good to know that the option is there, but only use it in extreme emergencies. All right, now, if you're on the Quest, you're already familiar with the Guardian system because, you know, you danced with the robot, you played with the blimp, you did that great orientation that they have, right? But you may not be familiar with how to use the grid to your advantage in all space, right? And, like, for example, if you get really dizzy in VR, especially if you're new to it, right, one thing you can do is you can hold your hand up and look at your hand and focus on it until the dizziness passes. And when it does, just slowly take your hand away like that. But you can also use the Guardian system to achieve this, too. If you, and I like to say, when you mess around with your guardian system, all right, be very careful. You don't want to, you know, bang into a wall and hurt yourself, injure yourself or your equipment, right? But when you're walking up, because a lot of times in all space, you'll see somebody walking along, they're having a good day, and all of a sudden, boom, they hit a wall, right? You know, you don't want that to happen to you. So always lead with your hands when you're feeling around for the edges of your guardian. And when you go up to get to the edge, you see that grid appear in front of you, but you can still touch your thumbsticks, right? Which means you can still move around in VR while your physical body isn't moving in the real world. So I can basically walk with, I basically attach my real world wall to this display here, right? And now that it's attached to this display, I can walk out away from it, right? And then maybe, you know, maybe the worst happens. Maybe I fall off the stage. I don't know. I've landed in the audience. And oh no, the audience has gotten hostile and they're coming to get me. So everybody come, like, come at me and try to make me dizzy. Go ahead, just take it out. Get it all out. Yeah, you've been muted for too long. You can't stand it. But you see, the thing of it is, is I can see past all you guys. And while I'm looking, at the screen, I'm looking at the display, I'm anchored into the real world. So if I start to feel a little dizzy, I know that's my real world wall there and it's going to make me less dizzy, right? So there's really nothing you guys can do that's going to make me feel dizzy or throw me off because I'm anchored to the real world because I know that that display is where my real world wall is, right? And uh, so that's a, that's a good technique to use. Um, another thing you can do in all space is you can switch from a room scale experience to stationary experience pretty effortlessly. So, like, let's say, you know, I'm standing up here on a stage, and I'm like, you know, I'm really tired of what's down, right? This has been hosting too long today, right? What I do is I go up to the edge of my guardian, right? And I stick my hands through it to make sure I got enough room for my head so I don't injure myself on my equipment, right? And I stick my head through when I got enough space, and then the pastor camera goes off, and I can see the real world. Like, I can take a sip of my coffee, you know, and then I see my chairs over there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk out of my guardian. I'm going to walk on over to my chair, right? And I'm going to turn around. I'm going to sit in my chair. I'm going to get comfortable. And once I'm comfortable, I'm going to press the blue button for a stationary experience. Once I press that blue button, right, then I'm going to see, you know, VR come back into view. And you know what? I'm still going to be in all space. I never left, right? I was moderating an event one time, and I felt like getting up and walking around. It was a big deal for me. So, I, you know, I got up. And I thought I was going to walk right into my guardian. But occasionally on the quest, your guardian is going to, it, you, it's going to get lost and it's going to want you to redraw the boundary. 
right? Because uh, they can't, you know, realize where it is by looking at the environment. Maybe the light levels change. You know, a lot of different reasons it can happen. But uh, they want you to redraw it. And usually that's not a big deal. But I was moderating this event, and the event was almost over. I didn't know if I'd be able to get back in, you know? So I'm redrawing the boundary. I'm going, oh, no. The host is going to be upset. You know, and I'm redrawing the boundary out. And, you know, I'm drawing it on the floor there. And I'm wondering, you know, why is my, why is my play space so big? I don't know. But, you know, I got to get back in there. When I do, I got to find the host. I got to tell them my flight and everything's bad. I don't know what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the grid comes up and I find I'm still in VR. I'm still in all space. I never left. All anybody saw was my avatar frozen like this. You know, I did that bit one time and I actually crashed. And everybody's in the audience looking, right? And I'm like all frozen there with my hands out. And, and they're like, he's really committed to this bit. Wow, he's really, he's really into it. You know, and really, I was gone for like, I was frozen there. But that's all anyone's going to see is your avatar frozen like that. Think of it as having an out of avatar experience, right? So you're going to be able to switch between a room scale and a stationary experience pretty effortlessly without ever leaving VR. And that's kind of great because this is going to give you the ability when you're in all space for a while, it's going to give, give you the ability to stay comfortable. And that's, that's kind of great. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you, this is actually uh, not overly useful information. It's just fun. If you go up to the edge of your uh, uh, guardian system and you get right to the boundary, when you stick your head through, the pass-through goes off, right? Make sure you got enough room to do it. But when you, the pass-through camera goes off and you can see the real world in front of you. If you do this really slowly, what you're going to see is you're going to see the real world and VR kind of merge together, right? So if you do it very slowly, you're going to be able to see uh, all space avatars in your real world environment. And this is kind of fun. This is going to give you a sense of scale, right? It's going to give you a sense that like avatars are about six feet tall in the world. And it's kind of cool to see the avatars of your friends standing in your real world environment, like in your office or, you know, in your living room or wherever it is you, you know, wherever it is you're doing VR, uh, you know, you can do that. I actually, a few, uh, about a month ago now, we had somebody in who was a truck driver and he used to, on his brakes, he'd go in the back of the truck and he'd go into VR and he tried this pastor thing and he saw, you know, people standing in the, ca you know, avatars standing in the cab of the truck with him. You know, I thought that was pretty neat, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you can totally do that. Now, the cool thing about the Quest is it just works. It just doesn't mean it can't work better, right? Uh, there's some products that can actually improve your experience quite a bit. Um, first, what I'm going to talk about is the earbuds, right? They kind of hang down from the side like earrings to make you look fancy when you're in VR. I don't know what I look like when I'm in VR, but when I got these things dangling down, I think I look fancy, right? And I had to wait a month for mine because they were on back order. And when they did, I went to the campfire in all space to chest, but, you know, test them out, see what it was like. Because I've gotten used to it while I was waiting for a month. I got used to how great the sound is on the Quest. There's no feedback. It's really rich, full sound. And I put these earbuds in, and I went to the campfire. And you know what? There's a breeze in the campfire. Nobody told me that, right? I went up to the fence there, right? And, uh, you know, while I was sitting there, I heard water rushing. I see a hand going up there. Jackie, we're going to be taking questions in just a minute. Hang on to that, all right? We'll be right with you. I'll take yours first, okay? All right. So we've got this uh, fence goes up. by the campfire. You hear the water rushing. And it's a lot of immersive sounds available in all space that, you know, can make, you know, your experience a lot more rich. The, the earbuds are definitely worth doing. Now, so the next one I'm going to talk about here, uh, listen, I hear a lot of people saying that the Quest is uncomfortable. And that simply isn't true. But when you first start out, it is. There's a breaking in period, right, that you really need to, you know, kind of pay attention. I wish they adver advertised this a little bit better. Because, um, you know, when I started wearing my Quest, I came in all space a lot. And I developed, like, the sore on my forehead, right? And while I had the sore going on there, it was very uncomfortable, you know, I kept coming in. And I was hosting an all-space VR 101 back then, and I, you know, I was getting to that part where I was telling everybody about, you know, how Michael Forrest knows too much about all-space, and it needs to be stopped. Well, you know, I got up to that bit, and all of a sudden I hear this, feel this moisture inside my headset, right? And I'm thinking, what is that? But I didn't stop, you know, I kept on going, because, you know, I'm a trained professional, right? So I'm going there, I'm doing my bit, you know, and I'm wondering what this is. And I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking, right? But it wasn't that. Michael Forrest doesn't sweat, ever. So it wasn't that, right? And then the event finished, right? And my wife comes in. She said, you know, how did it go? Cool like that, right? So I take my headset off. And, you know, before I could answer her, she says, go look in the mirror. She did it in that voice that means pretty much have to. So I went over, you know, and I'm going to use this here as a mirror. I look in the mirror. And what do I see? Right? I got these rings around my eyes. It turns out that sore had opened up and actually bled inside my headset. Which is, I know that's super nasty. I cleaned it up really good. Right? A lot of people don't like when I say that because people are like, oh, that's so gross. Right? But I ended up with a cool story. I got to walk around all week after that going, all space, I bled for you. And I get all dramatic with my now two hands and I put them up like this, like this. And then we do that. I'd be like, all space, I bled for you. Like that. You know, so, so that was fun for me to do. But I knew I had to do something about this. And I found a company called VR Cover. And what they do is they make these inserts for your headset. They have like one insert that helps prevent light bleed. You see what I did there? Light bleed, right? Uh, you know, but I didn't need that. Right? When I, so I got the cloth ones. You're shaking your head. No, that's a good bit, Ghost. 
I like that bit. You don't like that? Oh, okay. All right. Well, I tried. All right. So what happens is, you know, uh, this I got the cloth one because it comes with two of them, so you can wash one while the other one's in use. And you got your rage on, Jackie. We're almost there. Hang on to that question. I never seen somebody so excited to ask a question before. All right. So uh, what's going to happen is, you know, this this cloth one it feels like you got face in the pillow. It's very comfortable. But I had to wait like uh, about a week for mine to arrive. And while I was waiting, I came into VR a lot. I learned that the oils in your face actually change uh, your headset. Like there's a time for your headset to get used to you and you to it, right? Uh, and basically, so if you're going to do something, like you're going to alter it with like an external battery pack or an external counterweight or something like that, right? Don't do this right away. Get used to your headset first. Because if you alter it too early and then you go through the breaking in process, uh, it's going to seem like, well, it was comfortable that first day and now it's not comfortable again. Right? So go at it a little bit at a time. If it, if it hurts, it's uncomfortable, just take it off and allow the oils in your face to actually condition the material. And you're going to hit a point where you don't feel like you're wearing your headset at all. You're just here in VR with everybody else. And that's kind of what we're going for, right? We also have the prescription inserts, which are, you know, if you wear eyeglasses, it'll keep your headset lenses and your eyeglass lenses safe. You also have this travel case. Listen, the box that the Quest comes in is really great. But, um, you know, if you're going to be traveling or moving around, you're going to want to protect your device. Because, listen, if something happens to it, like you leave it on a table and the sunlight comes through and damages your headset, what can happen, right, is if you lose your device, if something happens to it, if it becomes damaged, it's not going to feel like losing your toaster, right? You, I've seen it happen. If you're in all space a lot and you develop friendships in here, you're going to register it as an actual loss because now you can't get to your friends anymore, right? So take good care of your equipment. That's very important, you know, and it's a good way to do it. Listen, if you want to try any one of these products, it's super easy to get to. We've got links up at altvr.com. If you just go to where it says channels at the top of the page, you're going to see where it says Ravenhall events at the very end of page two. We're at the bottom. We're at the bottom. And if uh, you, that'll open up our event channel. And once you get there, you'll see all these products listed there on the page link there. You can check them out. And um, you can also see join Discord button there if you want to help us put on events like this. Or uh, just also the subscribe button. Now, we don't get paid to do this, and you know, uh, but this lets all space know that you enjoy our content. And every time we see that number go up, we feel good, and it's a great way to say thank you. So if you press that subscribe button, we would very much appreciate it. Now we are finally, finally going to take your questions. And the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to make the raised hand appear on your lower right as if by magic. Let's see that. And I'm hoping, let's see. Uh, Let's see, if uh, anybody has a question or comment, they press that raise hand button. But Jackie, I promise I'll take yours first, so make sure you press that button. Let's see here. Uh, we got Jackie Inc. Here we go. You're on the air. Okay. What was the word? What was the question? Um, can you use just any headphones? That was what was so urgent. All right. Uh, yeah. Any <laughs> headphones? That, I mean, you know what? There are some headphones that won't work. It's true. And it's kind of, I mean, most headphones are going to work. Uh, like we were just, uh, discussing earlier, at, uh, actually this came up in go time. Uh, you can use headphones as long as you can plug it into the port. Uh, and you know, some of them will work, some of them won't. It's kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Uh, but you know, the Bluetooth headphones, for example, uh, they're not really working yet. Uh, although the headset does support Bluetooth, so at some point maybe that'll start working. Uh, they're always making new updates all the time. One of the great things about the Quest is that, um, you know, like I got my Quest and I thought it was awesome. And then they had OC6, and at OC6, they announced that they were going to come out with the Oculus Link cable, which, by the way, if you haven't tried it yet, it is awesome. It's going to allow you to hook it up to your PC, and then your Quest will perform like a Rift, like a Rift S, and you'll have, be able to have Rift-like experience, uh, Rift experiences, which is really great. Uh, you can also, you know, um, get, like, now they have the hand tracking available, too. You could try that out. Now, they didn't have this available uh, when I got my Quest, and a lot of times, you know, like in life, when they make improvements to something, they make you buy a brand new device. Right, but with these, they just roll it out and say, "Hey, here's a new feature. Enjoy it." You know, and so that's pretty cool, right? It's like it's like having like you know, you buy this mountain bike and you think it's awesome, right? And you think oh, this is great, couldn't possibly get better. And then somebody says, "Hey, you know that bike? About two, that's going to turn into a car, you know, your dream car, the one you've always wanted." You know, so yeah, uh, that's that's a bit what it's like. So it's pretty cool. Let's see, we have any other uh, questions or comments? We've got rated two three nine. Rated two three nine. You have a question? Well, yeah, there you are. Oh, I actually have a question about, um, do you know, um, like, you know how sometimes, like, when you look, it's, like, blurry? Do you know how to fix that? Uh, there's a couple ways you can go about doing that. Um, you know, uh, ma mainly you can play with the lens distance. Uh, there's a little slider on your lower left, right below your headset. You can just move that back and forth. That can clear it up a little bit. But in Allspace, all right, Allspace uh, did a lot to get into the Quest Store. Right, and one of the things they did was they really worked on increasing the performance. And one of the ways they did that 
was they made your graphic options default to like one of the lower settings, right? You can change these, but understand, do this at your own risk, all right? It will make your images a lot clearer, but it may also impact your performance to even warn you about it when you do it, you know? Uh, if you like later after, I can show you how I, I went about doing that for myself. I have mine fully maxed out and I haven't noticed any performance issues at all, but it's at your own risk kind of a thing. I see a hand up for, uh, from Erudite there. Let me see if you're on the list there. We can take your question. All right, Erudite. Erudite? Oh, am I saying that right? You're on the air. Tell me how I pronounce this. Erudite. 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 I say it right? I'm lousy with the name. Right, what's your question? So uh, the Oculus cable that you're talking about, the one that's for $79 on Oculus.com, Yes, uh, which, like, is, which is seventy nine, which is seventy nine dollars, by the way. Is there another yes. version that you can get on um, Amazon that's not so expensive that still allows you to do the same thing? Yes, that, that, uh... yes, actually you can. Um, the thing of it is, is understand uh, most of these cables are going to be a little bit shorter. Um, the ones they had out initially to test this feature uh, was when they were in beta, and most of them go for around fourteen, fifteen dollars. All right, what the eighty dollar cable has going for it is the length. Uh, I believe it's got fiber optics in there, and you're going to get a much better image quality on it. All right, it's going to be perform a lot better, but the uh, the lesser cables will work. And I believe Oculus.com still has a list of what cables you can use uh, to have that on there. I think I um, can't remember what type it is off the top of my head, but if you go to Oculus.com, uh, you'll find a list of uh, cables that will work. You know, and uh, you know, actually, we should put up a link for that too on our event page. I think we're gonna we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna put that up uh, later, Stag. Time for one more question before we head out there. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Costa. Costa, you have a question or comment? What's going on, Costa? Where are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, Rated was asking about this option, which is uh, adaptive resolution. If that option is enabled, sometimes it can get blurry, the image. Wait, if which, which, disable, option is it? which option is this? Adaptive resolution. Yes, in yes, that's exactly what I was yeah. talking about. Under the under the Oculus, uh, not the Oculus, under the Alt Space main menu, when you go to your settings yeah. menu, there's a category on the left hand side called display, right? right. And there's all kinds of there's at the aliasing, yes. in world render scale, there's menu render scale, and there's adaptive You're right res. in front of Susan, dude. Yeah, if you disable right. exactly. adaptive res, you will never get a blurry image again. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, right. right. Also, yeah. these changing these display options can affect performance. <laughs> uh, Alt Space cares a lot about yeah. that. You know, so do it at your own risk, but playing around with those display settings mm -hmm. can result in a much clearer image. Jackie, you have another question? And then we're going to yeah. close up and we're going to something else. Let's see. Jackie, what's your question? What's up? Um, can you still hear me? Can I, I can still hear you. We all can. Oh. oh. What's your question? Um, um, wait, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot your question? All of that hand raising, all that enthusiasm you don't know? All right, well, I'll tell you what, if you guys have any more questions, we're going to be headed out to the Flight Academy, and I'll be taking them there. So if you have some questions, we can take them there. Uh, so you don't feel like I'm not getting to you just a long list sometime. Uh, before we head out, though, I do want to show you guys something, because usually we end our events by taking everybody flying. And the way we uh, like to teach you guys, because now you have commanded controllers, is this is a flight tool. So when we get over to the Flight Academy, if you want to learn how to use this, just uh, see me, because basically the way it works, if you draw over the lines, it'll move you in the direction of that line. And if you draw long lines, whoa, it's going to move you much faster and much further. It's a really cool way to go fast with a lot of precision. You can actually always also use these while you're building worlds to get like, you know, very precise uh, results there. All right, so we are gonna head out now, but uh, before we do, I wanna ask if you've learned something here today, please share that information. So like if you're in a campfire and you see an avatar stuck in the ground, like about this tall, and you look over and you go, what's wrong little buddy? And they look up at you and they go, I'm on a quest and I'm stuck in the ground. Right. All you have to do is say, hey, press down on your left thumbstick. They'll pop up. They'll feel better. You'll feel better because you help somebody. And that's how we help keep this all space thing going. All right. So that's cool. Now, if you want to come uh, fly with us, we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to head out to music. So I want to see your moves while we do it. And we're going to go down this uh, portal right here, you know, and we're going to go in that portal and blue, through that door into the blue load screen light. We'll arrive at the Ravenel Flight Academy and I'll teach you all to fly and I'll take more of your questions if you have them. Thanks for enjoy, uh, joining us, everybody. We're a great audience, and I'll see you next time.